Good morning. We are back and it is Monday morning uh, and we're back on the church foyer. Church foyer here, getting things put back together. So we're almost done with this room. We gotta do trim. We gotta finish texturing that uh, and that and that over there. But once we get done texturing it, we can paint it. Uh, so my first job today is going to be sanding this down a bit. Uh, and then we're gonna go to the store and get a little bit more mud. That way we can mix up for texture and then pick up some trim and maybe even something for the countertop over yonder. So let's get started. So like I probably said in the past, this is not really the sander to sand drywall mud with because uh, it's not really made for the dust and then the sanding pad isn't really made with a bunch of holes in it to suck all of the dust away, but we're going to use it because it's what we got. It's a lot better than doing it by hand. And then we're going to hook it to our vacuum so it creates a lot less dust in the air. And then it'll keep my tool from getting all ruined inside too, because there's bearings in here. And if you pack it full of that dry dust, it'll just ruin them quickly, within a day, within a couple hours. So mine's a little, already a little dry sounding, but it is what it is. That's why you put the, in your fee when you're building as a contractor, you always put some sort of tool fee or maintenance fee, uh, and that's what helps pay for your tools when they go out. Because sometimes you have to use them, and sometimes you have to abuse them if you don't want to. So, our next goal is to sand this down, and then we'll go to the store and pick up some more mud. Now that the sanding is all complete, I had made a list and we're going to go to the store and pick up everything on that list. And hopefully we don't forget anything, but if we do, we'll have to be back there anyways one day. So we'll do that. We got all the sanding done, as you saw in the little time lapses there. Uh, I'm gonna do some touch up. That one's a little too bright to see. Uh, touch up on like, some of these by hand. And then that little spot there, I'm going to um, have to fix because it was a bubble in the, uh, in the tape from the previous job a long time ago. I just hadn't fixed it yet. And then there's a tiny little speck right there where when we took off the trim, the uh, tool went into the wall, but normal stuff. So we're going to store, pick up the stuff and I'll see you back here in like a second. Well, we just made it back from Home Depot and we picked up a bunch of uh, stuff. They didn't have all the trim work I wanted. So, but I got some of it. Uh, the rest of it was just too crooked or too gnarly to, to use. Uh, and then we've got our bucket of goods here of all the stuff we need for the little stuff and then the paint and stain and the drywall mud. So we have to do uh, the mudding first, uh, but once we get that done, whew, try to open the door here. Once we get the mudding done, then we can uh, move on to the texturing and then painting, and then we'll worry about the stain work and the trim work and stuff. So unload this stuff and then we'll start focusing on that. fun stuff that we bought from the store, like stain, more stain, more stain, and polyurethane, and more stain. Okay, so I went out and cut some of these. Just, this is just three quarter inch birch plywood that we used to build the coffee bar thing out of, greeting booth, whatever they call it. Uh, so I'm gonna take these. I'm gonna shake them up and get everything mixed up. You don't have, you don't want to shake them up if you're going to be staining because it creates bubbles. Actually, it doesn't really matter. You can shake them up, stir them up. Just make sure everything on the bottom is nice and mixed. And then um, it sounds a little more empty. And then once you get those all mixed up, then you can stain your sticks. I'm just gonna dip them in here and then let them dry over here, and then the customer can come decide which one they want. Okay, 
Okay, our next step is to empty this bucket because inside of this bucket, we're going to pour the, the mud for the walls. And it's 40 minute mud, so it dries within 40 minutes. Uh, but I'm gonna unload this. I'll kind of explain what we have when we're shopping. But we got some outlets because these outlets right here are all worn out from plugged and plugged out of, being plugged in and unplugged, like vacuum cleaners and such, are just super weak and they can't even hold anymore. We got some new ones of those. We got some new outlet covers, that way they all match. Um, and they look nice and shiny white. Got some stain applicator pads. Got a sanding block so we can sand the rest of the drywall mud by hand. We got some wood filler. It's more like a Bondo type stuff and we're going to be fixing those doors in the future. There's a few marks that we're going to fill over and then we'll sand it and paint and do some trim work. So that's for, uh, got some light switch covers because there's a few broken ones. We got some, uh, some caulking that is actually grout that we're going to fill some of the gaps on this stone hopefully with it if it matches somewhat good looks like it does so let's go there extra paint rollers blue tape for painting stuff and then here's a tool for I'll explain later but it helps with the contour of trim and I don't have one so I had to buy one some finished nails for putting the trim on some nail filler some hangers or screw anchors for hanging stuff on the wall screws for some things on the door I'll show you later, and some magnets for something cool I'm going to make over there. And now we have an empty bucket, we can mix up some mud and put it on the wall. When you don't have a lot of mud to mix, uh, just put some dry mud in your pan and then mix it with some water in your pan, just like so. Uh, it saves creating a mess in a bucket and all that stuff. It takes a little bit longer, but when you only need a little bit, you only need a little bit. Okay, let's catch you back at the speed here. I've done a few things why uh, you were off camera talking, camera's off. So we had the stain colors and we had the customer come, AKA the church secretary, which is our church designer uh, and pick the color. So we have stained, let me uh, peek there, let me show you. We have chosen this color called espresso. Now this top may or may not be permanent. Uh, I still have to I'm gonna try sanding it and seeing if it turns out somewhat better than fastening it so it's not crooked. Uh, but we'll get the espresso color on all the trim, uh, which is pretty nice. It looks a little gray and dark in the uh, picture, or in this sample, but when you put it on this, it's actually pretty brown looking. So two coats, one coat. They decided to go with one coat uh, because it's uh, a little dark. But we'll get her done. I'm gonna go ahead and paint this one more time because we're waiting on the mud to dry still. Uh, it takes about like another 30 minutes and it'll be ready to sand. But in the meantime, we'll paint the outside of this and then we will uh, get this looking better too. And then I'm gonna go play pickleball at uh, four o'clock or so. So that'll be pretty fun. So I'll have to get changed out of my grubbies and into my athletic clothing. Uh, but maybe I'll do a little video of us playing. Uh, it's pretty fun. I'm not amazing, but it's it's, it's still fun. So anyways, I'm gonna get to uh, do more of that stuff. Sometimes you just get so excited that you forget to turn the camera on. <laughs> I went ahead and sanded this uh, and then did another coat of stain just so it was nice and uh, covered. And now we have to wait for this to dry. We're gonna let it soak in a bit and we'll come back with a polyurethane. And because this is just gonna be a temporary top, most likely for this. Uh, and so now that we've got it stained, we'll let it dry. Do a polyurethane clear coat on it that way if they set any coffee mugs or anything on it or spills it won't hurt anything and now we can paint this but before we paint this i'm actually going to sand these they don't look dry but that's because they're a different color than the original stuff so we'll sand those babies and start texturing soon well they weren't as dry as i thought so they're still a little a little damp so we'll let those dry as long as they need maybe about an hour or so while we paint the front of this thing
Well, my plan was just to paint the front of that and the side of it. Uh, that way I could make it look good for when I put the top on, uh, but I poured a little too much paint. So I ended up, as you saw, painting. These doors are gonna get painted eventually, so but we're gonna take off the trim and we're gonna take those off and paint those all separately. And so just getting the bulk paint on the doors was what my goal was, to cleaning it, maybe a little sanding still there where the tape was, like I did on this door. So we used up the paint uh, in our bucket uh, and then we're gonna come back after pickleball because I'm in my pickleball outfit now. And we're gonna do some staining, uh, possibly some clear coating of that uh, countertop and stuff like that. So, and actually we can sand these and texture them hopefully because hopefully they'll be dry by the time we get back. So let's do some pickleball and then get back to work. <laughs> We are back from pickleball and it's getting dark on me so I'm only going to do one more project before uh, the evening um, and I'm actually going to do a clear coat on that uh, on the surface of the uh, countertop that we built for this uh, even though it's temporary I want it to look good while it sits there so I'll mix this up a bit and then I'm just going to stick it on with one of these sponge brushes I'll put it up nice and thick that way it doesn't have any bubbles in it these like to create a lot of air bubbles so you have to sand them out if you use these, uh, but the first coat's usually okay to do with these. And then I have a roller to do the next two coats with. Uh, but we'll take this and I'll show you how to do it out there. So this is the top side, of course. And so I don't want to do it uh, first because I don't want the drips to come this way. And so I'm gonna do the bottom first. So I'm gonna flip it over to the ugly side. And then I'm gonna do a clear coat around the edges where you'll see it if you're actually looking underneath of it. Uh, and then I'll flip it over and then that way the drips will come this way if there are any. So it's time to take this and put it on. As far as time goes, that's gonna do it for us today. And I think the video is also at the perfect length right now, so I'm gonna leave it. Uh, we're gonna post it as its own standalone video. We'll probably have a few days like that where we have just a video after another possibly uh, because we're gonna get this thing done. So you see the countertop is sitting in here right now because it's too cold and damp outside for it to dry. Uh, so it'll smell a little polyurethane in here uh, tomorrow, but we'll open the doors and we'll blow all the fumes out. Uh, you'll see I put it on nice and thick and then also I stood it up uh, and then I ran the brush up and down in here that way any of the drips uh, there won't be any runs in it I have to sand out later there's always a few uh, so that's gonna look good and again remember this is probably just temporary uh, but we want it to look good and we'll screw it down on top of this until we get the rest of the room finished uh, and then we'll move on so we got tomorrow probably gonna do some more painting on the doors uh, we're gonna do some trim work and since we picked stain color we can actually start staining the trim which is gonna go around the perimeter and then this mud is actually dry right now. I did a little bit of sanding on that one down there. Uh, this one was still wet yesterday, uh, when I left, so I hadn't sanded it yet. Uh, but we'll texture those and get those painted and the room will look so much more finished without those big white spots all the way up and down them. So anyway, thanks for watching. As always, we are at 116 subscribers today, which is phenomenal because that is four more, uh, three, it's three more, this, that's three this week, three more than it's been for quite a while. So I'm excited. I can't wait to get to a thousand and then beyond. It's gonna be phenomenal. So anyways, don't forget to look in the description below. Don't forget to leave a comment uh, and then make sure, uh, make sure I know you're watching. Anyways, we'll catch you later. God bless.